microwave society. But yet, the, the, the generation that we live in wants us to think that. But God can get it to you. Listen, God can perform it in your life. And the main thing that you want God to do in your life is you want God to be in the midst of your life. You want your eyes to be upon Him. One of the great things, listen, don't lose me. One of the great things about this Scripture is, is it said that this was the one that Jesus loved. So there had to be something that went on before He was ever raised out of this grave. He was ever raised out of this tomb. There was something that, that took place. There was already an exchange that had taken place long before He was ever in the grave. Aren't you glad that there's an exchange that has taken place? He gave His life for our life. And then God says, because I've done this, I want you to love me. I want you to pursue me. I want you to come. My God, that's good. I want you to come after me. And then when it's all said and done and your body's laid in the grave, He said, I'm going to give you the most fruitful, the greatest blessing you've ever had the most fruitful blessing you've ever had he said I'm going to call you forth and I'm going to raise you up from the dead and you're going to sit with me forever and ever and be with me forever and ever now don't get me wrong this in itself was the, one of the greatest miracles I mean, he was dead for four days four days but later on you know what happened look at me you know what happened later on he was sitting with Jesus in the Scripture. I mean, and here they sat together, him and, and the Lord, this man that was dead, and here they are probably at his house. It doesn't say, and they were together eating, and the Scripture says that the Jews were so filled with hatred, they wanted to kill Lazarus. And isn't that funny? How that so many times in the church house, and it's the truth, and, 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 and also in the world, when you tell people what God's done for you, and you talk about how He raised you up and brought you out and did something great that nobody else can do. Have you ever noticed that they, they don't? I thought for sure, Brother Danny, when I got saved that people would be glad. I'm sure you felt, oh, I thought for sure they would be happy that we were different, that we were kind, that, that we weren't the same, we, but they weren't. They wanted to kill us. They, they wanted us dead. They didn't want to hear anything about it. They cast us out of their presence. They didn't invite us to the parties anymore, did they, Brother Josh? Brother Gil? They, they, they didn't want to have nothing to do. You know why? Because the glory of God and the miracle of the Holy Ghost and the King of Kings and the Lord of all Lord had raised us up from a place that you and I could never raise ourselves up from. I want to tell you right now that I serve a risen Savior. I serve a God that can. I serve a God that says if you'll believe me, if you'll see the glory of God, you'll see the power of the Holy Ghost in this service and in your life today. Will somebody say amen in this house? that day going to be like the greatest one of the greatest songs I ever heard I said everybody wants to go you know everybody wants to go to heaven you know but nobody wants to die but one of the main things that I want to show you is I want to show you that this particular passage of scripture is the top of the last days in our life first of all I want you to know look up here at me that God you ought to smile you ought to be so happy I mean I, you ought to be so grateful because God knows your name I mean, I want, you to, I want you to realize this morning, Brother Tim, that God has saved you from the burning flame. God said when you die that you won't go down into the pit. But I hear the voice of God saying, but I'll resurrect your life. He'll resurrect your life in this life. He'll resurrect your life in the next life. But He'll give you a glorified body. Number two, it's a reminder that that we're living our life. You should live your life for one purpose. Jesus told Pilate, For this purpose came I into the world to bear witness to the truth. And this is the life that you and I, look at me, need to also live. We are to bear witness to the truth regardless of what people think about us or say about us. It doesn't matter if they like you or not. It doesn't matter if people like me. I didn't come to be liked. I didn't come to be popular. If I was going to do that, I'd have stayed in sales with my daddy's company. But I came for one purpose. I was born for this purpose. And you ought to know what your purpose in life is. To serve the Master. To follow hard after the One. As John said, whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. 
And I feel like, John, sometimes that you and I are the voice crying in the wilderness saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord for the Lord shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel, with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And This is what we see. God said whether we die a physical death or that we meet Him in the air in the rapture, that we're going to be with Him. That's the most important thing that I want the church to know today. And we need to be reminded why we do what we do. We don't work to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We've already rested from that work. Our rest is already in the blood through the cross of Calvary. But we work so that others will see the manifested glory of the one that we serve and love. Amen. And today I want to encourage you and I want you to know that God knows your name. Will you raise your hands and He knows who you are? He knows right what's going on in your life right now. Then they, 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 they began to, to unwrap His body. And that's the way revelation is in, in our life. I don't know if they started at the feet or if they started at the head. I don't know which words. I don't know that. I, he didn't. But I want to tell you this. The more that you see, the more you want to see. If you can just catch a glimpse of God, the more you want of God. I don't know about you, but I remember the day that I got saved. I'm, I, I wouldn't care if I'd ever preached or not. All I knew is one day I was lost and the next day I was found. All I knew is one day that I didn't care anything about God or the Bible or church or anything. And the next day, man, I couldn't wait to get in the Word. I couldn't wait to get to the house of God because God had changed our life. And God has changed you today. Every second that you live, every moment that you breathe, every time that you get out of bed, you ought to thank God Almighty for another day of life. You've got another day to shine. Amen. Like, like Josh preached, don't whine, but shine for God. Amen. And lastly, I go all the way back, and I, I know what happened in the, in, the, in the beginning, but I want to go back, and I want to share this last thing. I told you I'm going to keep you long. She sent word to Jesus. I want you to look at what she said, the words that she said to the Lord. They were fitly spoken. That's the words that we need to speak to the Lord. Words that are fitly spoken. Words that will encourage. Listen, words. And she said, Lord, him who thou lovest is dying. And sometimes I pray, and I'm sure sometimes you'll pray, and you don't feel like that your prayers get off the floor, but they do. Because I believe today, listen, I believe that God loves you this morning. And I believe, just like Lazarus, that we are the ones that He loves. There was this woman one day. I'd only been saved just a handful of months. I was over in Fountain City. Actually I, actually, I was over off Merchant's Road, and I was going down the road, and it was late in the evening. It was, it was getting towards dusk, and this, and this woman got in behind me. She's blinking her lights on and off and honking the horn at me. So I pulled over to the right side of the road. Listen, I pulled over to the right side of the road. I got out of the car. I walked up to her car. I can see her right now, and she's got the window rolled down. She says, Mr., she says, I, I, I know you. I, I know. She kept saying, I, I know you, mister. One of the craziest things that's ever happened to me in my life. This really happened. And, and, I, and, and, I, and she kept asking me to get in the car with her. I said, I'm not going to get in the car with you. And so, I, of course, I started talking to her about Jesus. I, and I told her, I said, you know, I said, I said, Jesus, he, he loves you so much. <clears throat> when I said that name, Frida, she, she started banging her head uncontrollably. I mean, literally trying to kill herself banging her head on the steering wheel of her car. And I knew what it was going on. I knew through the gifts what, what was going on with her then. And she looked up and she began to weep in front of me and she said, there's no way. She said, there's no way that Jesus could love somebody like me. And see, God had revealed to me what, why she was in such torment and such pain because He told me that she had aborted her baby. And I told her what she had done. But I want you to understand today that, that just like this woman, this hour that we live, that you and I live, you, you have to know, look at me, all you young people especially, you have to understand and know and believe that Jesus is with you and that He loves you right where you are. I know some of you in here, you can't fool your preacher. You surely can't fool God. I know that you struggle. I know what some of you all struggle with. Don't think that I don't know because God will show it to me and I'll pray for you all the time. 
I know. But we've all struggled. And the struggle was is that the fact wasn't that Lazarus wasn't alive. He was just alive because when he came out of the tomb, you can only imagine what the people saw. But there was still a struggle in his life. Because he was still wrapped up in his grave clothes, wasn't he? I'm trying to show you something. I'm, going, I'm getting into the deep of it now. See, he was still wrapped up in his... There still was a struggle to get free. He was alive, but he was still bound up. There was nothing was going to hold him in that tomb because God had already said, if you believe that I am the Son of God, He said, you will not die, but you will live. And He said, and those, praise God, that live and believe in Me shall never die. Do you believe this this morning, church? Do you believe it unrevocably? Are you sold out and are you sure? There was still something that had to happen in His life before He was completely free. And you know what? Somebody had to help Him. Look at me. There was somebody that had to help him get... He couldn't do it. He was, he was so bound. But there was somebody. There was some man, somebody that God said, Now, loose him and let him go. They had to help him. See, you and I have got to help each other. Do you understand that? You and I are a body of believers. You and I are brothers and sisters in Christ. And we've got to help each other. Because we are free. Because we are alive. But yet there's times in our life when the devil wants to wrap us up. Does anybody understand what I'm saying to you this morning? He wants to wrap us up in grave clothes. But let me tell you, God has sent people to you that will help you get free. That will help you get loose so you can run again so you can shout again somebody stand to your feet somebody stand up and raise your hands and tell God I'm free and running loose in this place today she said no he, there's, there, she said no there, there, there's, there's no way that he can love me but by the time it was all said and done she realized it Gillis see some of you somebody in here one reason I keep preaching this is because you're living in condemnation you don't have to your past is your past you don't have a past anymore are you listening to this preacher if you've asked God to forgive you your sins are under the blood you're just as free as you've ever been but see Satan he wants to keep you wrapped up in your grave clothes come on he wants to keep you bound even though you're standing and you've stepped outside of your tomb that you were in. See, God wants you. This is my final point. God wants the church in this hour to be more fruitful. And it has to begin on the inside of us. Brother Bill, God, look at me, everybody. God wants your life to be fruitful. God wants you to produce in your life. If there's one thing in life that, that, that you'll die if you're not fruitful. You, you, God said there's one thing I want you to tell him. He said, I want you to produce. And God said, be fruitful from the very beginning. He told him, be fruitful and multiply. Or other words, I've got things that I want you to do that you can produce in your life. And God's going to be the one who can help you. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Is that all right there, church? That's a good God. God wants you to be fruitful in your life. And I know you are. I know a lot of y'all are, are very fruitful in your life. You've done great things for God. But there's more. He'll prune that fruit so you can bear more fruit. He'll, he'll chop off a, a part of it. You know, we think we're doing so good. And then he'll chop it off so we can bear more fruit. So I'm thankful for that today. But I want you to know today, listen, you're free. And there's no reason anybody in here under the my voice there is no reason for you to walk out of these joy, doors not full of joy this morning if somebody's sick around you it don't mean not to have joy just pray for them or release that joy say I'm going to intercede for you say I'm going to encourage you I'm going to read the scripture to you we're going to believe God together that's what I'm going to do in your life I'm not going to get in your boat and sink it I'm going to get in your boat and help you bail that water that's trying to get in there to sink you. Amen. We're going to get in there together. Come on, raise your hands. We're going to get in there together, and we're going to, we're going to fight the good fight of faith, and we're going to live a good life for God, and He's going to help us all the way. If you believe it, will you shout amen? Amen. Amen. Can we get a song, Jamie? Can you sing some, some kind of Holy Ghost rolling song or something? Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. 
Pastor Marcus Severance and the